making these introductions today. It seems like we have spoken about this program forever. And we, we had them scheduled in November and had to cancel due to an uh, impending tropical storm, which was a non-event. But anyhow, they're back with us. And I'm pleased to introduce Sam Carr, otherwise known as Santa Claus, and um, Mike Adams, a.k.a. Billy Bartram. Um, they have resumes as long as my arm, and I could just go on and on. But I just briefly, I want to tell you that you both live on the St. John's River, correct? So they are very, very huge advocates of our waterways. Um, they both promote, spend a lot of time promoting the St. John's River. Um, Sam is a retired district manager for Ford Motor Company, and his passion for the river led him to establish the Bartram Trail in Putnam County. And he's going to tell us about an impending trail that we will have right here in Nassau County. Um, and there's so much more I can say about Sam, but I'm going to let him tell you more. Um, Mike is an ecologist, a researcher, an educator, and an author. He holds a BS in biology with studies in anthropology and a master's in environmental management. And I've taken some of his environmental studies classes that National Garden Club um, promotes. And he is an awesome, entertaining speaker. So there's a lot more I can say, but I'm going to let them talk now. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure to be here today. What I'd like to do this morning is take you back in time to around 1774 and describe to you some of the things that I've been encountering along the way, particularly in your area where we are right now. So, this is our opening slide. You might notice that logo. I like that. A little bit about uh, William Bartram. We talked about that already. Again, both Sam and I are honored to be here. And this gives you an idea. Those of you that perhaps have read travels, you have a vivid imagination, and this is probably something that you've envisioned what I look like in my travels in 1774. Take a close look at this picture. It, it's, it's quite exciting and it's quite telling as far as how I'm traveling, mostly by water, much of it on foot, much of it on horseback. But this is, this is my water travel by bark, another name for my boat or canoe. And you see, you see I have some various things in here like my sketchbook and my, and my notebook right here. I have a box right here, very similar to that box that you see on our display table there. I have a press back here, which is where I'm pressing specimens along the way. You notice a lantern here, a knapsack. Oh, that lighting is amazing. Very good. And look at these, <laughs> even sample specimens. I'm collecting specimens along the way. And I even have some company here. But look at this picture even more, and it gives you an idea on what the travels look like in this mysterious new world. You see some other animals up there. Look over here. Raccoons along the bank of this waterway. Some birds up here. Quite amazing. Quite amazing. And this is just a general map of my travels in the southeastern colonies back in the 1700s. There is no United States of America. It's colonies. And you see the red lines there. That depicts where the travels were going. I started off in the town of Philadelphia in the Pennsylvania colony. Took a ship from Philadelphia to the port of Charlestown in the South Carolina colony. From there, you can see I went down to a village that will become known as Savannah, and then I made quite an extensive journey 
upstream the Savannah River towards a village called Augusta. Some of you may have heard of it. <laughs> At the foothills of a mountain range, the Appalachians, right here. Came back down and continued my journey south. And this is where we get into the East Florida Territory. And these are some of the plants that I've been encountering along the way. And some of them you may be familiar with even here. Even here. And you notice this particular one, the hooded pitcher plant, we have the original artwork that I crafted right there next to Sam. Right over there, you can take a closer look at that as, at your leisure. And that's a photograph of one. The hooded pitcher plant, one of our carnivorous plants. Now I'm very proud of this particular piece of artwork. Look really closely here. This is like a composite of many things that I've been encountering along the way. You see the pitcher plant here. There's actually three different types of pitcher plants in this sketch. The hooded pitcher plant here, look at this one lying down. That's another type, and there's even another one right here. Okay? But this, this artwork, I'm very proud of this artwork because it has so much going on in it. Look at this little lizard down here. Look at these insects. And of course, there's activities going on here. There's predation going on in this drawing. <laughs> Look at this snake with a frog. A frog prey. And you may notice this plant here. You may notice that as part of your logo. The American Lotus. Well, I was encountering that in my travels. And there's a drawing of it right there. This is another one, and we have the original piece of artwork on this one. This is the pawpaw, and this is the plant that grows in uplands, which around here, around your village here of Fernandina Beach, there's a lot of hills and uplands. You may have seen this plant, the pawpaw. It blooms in the early spring, and it produces a fruit that's edible. That's an actual photograph of one. Now, I'm not exactly sure what a photograph is, but I know that that is a photograph of one. This is another one, and we brought this with our, with our display today. We have a, the actual artwork of this one. You see it's the tar flower, the long one that goes to the, to the left there, Bufferia. And this one? is a Georgia plume, and I was encountering this not far north of here along the Altahamaha River in southeast, in the southeast Georgia colony. Why is it called a tar flower? That is a really good question. This gardener up here asked me a question, why is it called the tar flower? Does anybody know? It's sticky. Yep. The flowers are sticky and the leaves are sticky, like tar, like pine pitch. So that's what it looks like. And that's what the Georgia plume looks like as well. As well. Very delicate flower, beautiful. Both are very beautiful. And that's what it looks like in a larger setting, the Georgia plume. Here's another one. Fever bark, and guess what? We have this one with us too, the original artwork here. This is one that was also encountered along the Alta Tamaha River in the southeast Georgia colony. Very beautiful flower. Stunning, you can see what it looks like. And it's a bush, if you will. Now, this is one, this is one that I was fortunate enough to have named after my explorations. That's one of my colorized drawings. And as we were talking about before, when I was in the field making these sketches, I just used charcoal, charcoal drawings to sketch these, and then I colorized them back at my father's herbarium in Philadelphia. My father's name is John Bartram, in case you don't know. That's one of the colorized versions. 
This is actually a piece of artwork that's on a mural in a town south of here along the St. John's River. I think it will become known as Palatka. And there's murals all over in this village. This is on one of the walls in the buildings, an actual picture of the Bartram Zixia. Now this one, I come to find out the ones that I was discovering in May in my Northeast East Florida Territory travels was a spring blooming Ixia. This one on the right is a fall blooming Ixia. So now you know there's two blooming Ixias in the East Florida Territory, one in the spring and one in the fall. That's the spring blooming one and you can see the petals are slightly different. They're more broad near the ends. Just a stunning flower. I'm very proud that it's named after me. Very proud indeed. And this is one, some of you may have heard of this, named after a very good friend of my father's and mine, Benjamin Franklin, up in the Pennsylvania colony. This is one of my colorized sketches. And by the way, I hope to publish all this around 1791. <laughs> in the travels that we were talking about earlier. There's a colorized version. This was also in the Southeast Georgia colony, Altamaha River, or Alatamaha, as I put in my journal. And that's what it looks like in an actual photograph. Another stunning flower. Absolutely stunning. This is a picture of my house in the Philadelphia village where my father John has his herbarium and that plant that you see in the foreground is the Franklinia that small tree right there growing right in front of my house now this is one everybody thinks I was strictly involved with plants but I was doing a lot of research on birds and other animals as well this is one that I sketched somewhere along the beaches, maybe right out here off your Atlantic coastline. And you see that these are seashore creatures here. A bittern bird, starfish, sea urchins. This is a plant called a sea rocket. Original sketches that again I hope to publish around 1791. Now we're going to kind of transition a little bit into your specific organization. Again, the American Lotus. Yep. All of you should recognize this by now if you're involved in this organization and you've been paying dues for years. <laughs> there it is. And as I talked about before, in one of my very favorite types of drawings, there's the seed pod right there the American Lotus. So, I'd like to take a minute, just bear with me a minute, and I'm going to read to you a couple excerpts that I hope to publish, okay? What I would encourage you to do, if you have vivid imaginations, close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes and relax, nice steady breathing, and just listen to my words here. After walking through a spacious forest of live oaks and palms and crossing a creek that ran through a narrow salt marsh, I and my fellow traveler arrived at the safe plantation where the agent, Mr. Egan, received us very politely and hospitably. This gentleman is a very intelligent and able planter, having already greatly improved the Edgemont estate particularly in the cultivation of indigo. Keep your eyes closed. Relax. The coasts, sounds, and inlets environing these islands abound with a variety of excellent fish, particularly rock bass, drum, mullet, sheephead, whiting, grouper, flounder, and sea trout. 
The bays and lagoons are stored with oysters and varieties of other shellfish, crabs, shrimp, etc. The clams, in particular, are large. Their white meat, tender and delicate. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can open your eyes now. Very good. I have just given you a snapshot of some of the travels that I've covered in my adventures in the southeast part of the 13 colonies. You saw the maps there. At this time, I have the honor and privilege of introducing a very good friend of mine and Bartram scholar, Mr. Sam Carr. He is also the vice president of the Marshall Trail Society of Florida, uh, as well. And um, you know, his um, because of, he's a naturalist, and because of his uh, botanical expertise and everything, he's William Marshall, as we know it. It's really, really neat to, to see. So um, my name is Sam Carr, and I am the uh, president of both the Marshall Trail Conference and the Marshall Trail Society of Florida. And um, I would, uh, I'd, I'd like to take this time to tell you the difference of the two, and um, and and all, and to kind of give you an idea of where where we're we're coming from. Actually, the Bartram Trail Society of Florida was actually formed in 1975, way back when, and uh, it was reformed in 2019 with the purpose of developing the Bartram Trail in Florida, and um, by working with all the sites that we we Bartram traveled in the areas they traveled through. Um, we were the Marcham Trail Conference's first affiliate. Marcham Trail uh, Garden Club was was probably the second one. So uh, so that's that's really cool. And so our our, our idea is to preserve the uh, William Marcham Trail and for, and uh, and his legacy uh, as we go down the road. Um, and then, uh, the Marcham Trail Society of Florida is a Florida organization 501 501c3. And um, we, uh, one of our primary uh, activities is we conduct the St. John's River March and Frolic in Palatka. Um, now we postponed it this year and it's all the way back to April the 17th and 18th of this year. So that's where we're, we're headed for right now. And so we'd love to have you all come see us. And so that slide is wrong, but it's, it's, uh, it's April. Um, the 17th is where when we'll, we'll be there. Uh, we were formed, uh, the Bartram Trail Conference is the national group. The Bartram Trail Conference was also formed in 1975, and it, what it does is it, it has gathered all of Bartram, through scholars and so forth, all of the actual routes that Bartram took across the southeastern United States, and, um, and we highlight those instead of having it as a continuous trail, people, when you say trail, they think, was well, it a hiking trail? Is it a biking trail? Is it a paddling trail? Yes, it's, it's all of that. It, it incorporates all of Bartram's travels across the southeast and, uh, and all. And so in each particular state, there are, you know, there's a Bar there are several Bartram trails in Georgia. Uh, Alabama has a fantastic Bartram paddling trail right through the middle of the state, the Tennessee River. And um, Louisiana has a Bartram trail that's centered around garden clubs. And Florida has the Putnam County Marcham Trail and what we hope to be, be the whole St. John's River is a Marcham Trail. So, so you've got all of these different kind of, in North Carolina, right through the middle of the entire state is a Marcham Trail. So, so these trails are all around, but they're, they're, you know, they're locally managed and so forth. And that's what we call a, a string of pearls. And so the uh, conference works to promote interest in developing public access recreation trails. Um, hiking, biking, horseback, and botanical gardens in the corridor of Bartram's route. Okay, so that's kind of what we're, we're, we're about. So um, we want to finish really what the Deep South Garden Club started back in, uh, back in 1975 and all. 
1975, we were starting our bicentennial uh, celebrations. Y'all remember that? So there's some money around, and so we got some of it, and the garden clubs got with uh, uh, Governor George Wallace, actually, and said, we need, to, we need to coordinate this effort. And so uh, George called up his buddies, including Jimmy Carter and some others, around and said, uh, send me a couple of people from each one of these states. We're going to start a conference to establish the Bartram Trail in southeast Florida. And lo and behold, that's what happened. So uh, as it turns out, the Federation of Garden Clubs, and particularly the Deep South Group, uh, was, uh, took the lead on this. And they really started doing stuff. And, uh, and all because they were ladies of means. And so, so they were able to get things done. And, uh, and it, it's, it's the case as well today. And so now there are over 30 marching trail markers in the state of Florida that were placed by the Federation of, uh, Florida Federation of Garden Clubs. So we're piggybacking on that and trying to reestablish that initiative going on. And so with the Marching Trail Conference established what we call affiliates, and these are to build a resume for our idea of creating the National Heritage Corridor designation. And that's our ultimate goal. That was the ultimate goal back then. And the rules have all changed and everything, and that's our ultimate goal going forward. Is anyone familiar with the Gullah Heritage Corridor? You ever heard of it? Never have? Gullah Geechee, right, Heritage Corridor. Okay, that's what the National Park Service does, sets up. They set up these corridors that are themed around, you know, certain history and heritage. And so that's, that's the direction that we're, we're going with this. So uh, what will be become will be, uh, the, it'll be called the William Marshall National Heritage Corridor. That's, what, that's our ultimate goal. And so uh, the Marshall Garden Club of Amelia Island is a major part of that. Let me show you where the vision came from here. Um, this is a, from a 1978 letter, uh, 78 letter from the South Region of the Garden Club. It says, it's truly felt that the garden clubs of the Southern Region have provided the impetus, effort, and seed money to get a tremendous project underway, and they did. Trails are unique to America, and when the 2,500 miles of Bartram Trail has been constructed, it will become a permanent heritage for America, one that the garden clubs can very well be proud of having a part in, in creating. That was in 78, and so we're trying to, to keep, the, keep, the, keep the vision going. That's what we're trying to do. So what does it look like? Well, this is what the National Bartram Heritage Corridor will look like once it gets all uh, in place. And so uh, it's, it's already in place. It's just a matter of us getting designated. It starts up here in the Carolinas, comes all the way down through North Carolina, South Carolina, out into Georgia. Um, they think he got into Tennessee, but not really. And, um, and then all the way across Georgia, Alabama, all the way across Alabama, down the Tennessee River, Mobile, Alabama, went uh, across. Um, never really landed in Mississippi, although they claim he did. But and, and then he wounds up. The end of his trip was at uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where he saw the white cliffs of the Mississippi River. I didn't know there were white cliffs in Mississippi, but he he found them. And uh, and I uh, whoops, sorry. And so. Uh, here in, in, in Florida, as he came down, Savannah was a major location for him, as Billy had said earlier. And then he came down, and his father actually went up the Altamaha River. And he went up the Altamaha River twice. Uh, once was with his father. That's when they found the Franklinia. And when he came back in 1774, his daddy said, Billy, bring it home. And so he did. He went back and he found the, uh, the Franklinia. Now, the Franklinia now does not exist in the wild. The only, the only examples of the Frank Linnea that exist, and you can buy them from garden clubs and stuff like that, were the ones that Bartram actually took to Bartram Gardens, and, that, and, and that, um, that's his legacy. So he preserved that plant alone, one of his major accomplishments as a botanist. And so um, the story is, is yours. The Altamaha is not that far from here. So, uh, you know, if you're out in the woods and you find a, a flowering plant like that in the springtime, you know, maybe you'll, you'll be the first one to see one in the wild since 1835. <laughs> so, so, be lucky. Okay, very cool. So he comes down, and uh, Darien, he spent a lot of time in Darien, 
and then he comes down and travels past Cumberland Island to Amelia Island and uh, comes down and he stayed in Palatka at what was called Spalding's Lower Store. That's where he hung out and then, um, and then he traveled as far down as Blue Springs in 1774 and he went out to the uh, Suwannee River twice and, um, and there he, was, uh, he visited what was called Cuscawilla, which is, uh, was the Indian capital um, in that particular area. And, um, and then from there he left and went back and that's when he went out, out west. So, when the Barbara Teach Heritage Quarter is established, that's exactly what it will look like, okay? And, um, and uh, what will it look like in Florida? Well, this is what it looked like in Florida. And you can see it, it encompasses a lot. And everything, and so 25 miles each side of the of actual Marshall's route is what we call the corridor. And why do we do that? Well, because it's representative of the lands that he would have traveled. And all, and so there's recreational events and stuff and trails and all in that in all of that area, and um, and we want to promote it as uh, and and to uh, to interpret it um, as such. And so um, there you are. So you can't get to Florida on the Marcham Trail except through here. <laughs> so that's, that's really good, really cool. So, uh, so this is the Marcham Garden Club's pearl. Okay, remember when we talked about our, our string of pearls? So this is, this is the pearl that we recognize the Marcham Garden Club, and we appreciate it. So that's really cool. So how does it look, what does the Marcham uh, Garden Club look like uh, on the Bartram Trail Conference website. Well, this is, this is a snapshot of the Bartram Trail website. There's your marker. So it's, it's on our trail, it's on our website and so forth. And, um, and here you are. Sure enough, you're alive and well on our, on our website. So there you are, okay? And, um, and that's it. Um, so Bartram Trail in Florida, how do you look like as far as the Bartram Trail in Florida? Well, this is what the Bartram Trail in Florida looks like with all of the historic markers and so forth. And, um, and, um, and there you are, sure enough. Isn't that cool? So um, you want to mention, we went down to Deland, to the Deland Garden Club and talked to them, you know, a similar presentation and so forth. And they're just delighted to know that this is part of their heritage. And it is part of your heritage, it is. So what does it look like trail-wise? Okay, so Bartram's actual route, he was through Nassau County twice, okay? The first time he was traveling with his father, John, and they traveled basically down the old Kings Road, which is now the Kings Ferry Road, and now US-1, down close to Hilliard, Callahan, and all the way down to, until they got to Calford, and then went across and to St. Augustine. So their ultimate goal was to get to St. Augustine because John Bartram was the king's botanist, and he was hired by the governor of, the, uh, of, of um, St. Augustine to reconnoiter the St. John's River because they had just inherited, the British had just inherited East Florida, and they didn't know what it was. And so they sent John and William all the way down to, to do that, and this was when his trip was in 1765, and that trip lasted until uh, uh, March of 1766, and um, and also um, so that's that was the first sight of Nassau County that Billy had was on horseback down this way. When he came back again, he left up at Darien, came down the uh, St. Mary uh, Altamaha River, came uh, down to St. Mary's, and he was in a boat and he traveled past. Uh, Cumberland Island, made a stop there, then crossed Cumberland Island and came to Fort Clinch. Well, Fort Clinch wasn't there, but he, what he was looking for was the Egmont Plantation, because back then this was Egmont Island, isn't that neat? And, um, and so uh, he came down, he met up with Mr. Uh, Egan, and they spent time reconnoitering all over Avili Island. Uh, Bartram was interested in what grew here and all of that kind of stuff, and so he, that, that he did do. And um, later on, he traveled down to, uh, 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 throughout the whole island, departed uh, by boat again, uh, out of, uh, down where the uh, Million State Park is, and, um, and went across to uh, the Calvin Islands and, um, and on toward Calford. That's, that was his trip here. 
He also took a boat trip up the, uh, the Amelia Island River, or Amelia River, and, um, and all while he was here. So he was here, and we know he was here. And so if, uh, if we wanted to establish a Bartram Trail in, uh, in Nassau County, what we'd want to do is somehow we'd want to, we'd want to recognize his first trip down here, uh, probably with a road sign of some kind. And then here, though, you've already got trails and all here. So we don't need to invent anything. We just need to tell people of the history and the heritage of William Bartram through this area. So uh, he paddled. He horseback rode, he hiked, he did all of that good stuff through your area. And so, um, and uh, that, that we do know, okay? So there you are, right there on, on, the, uh, on the trail as well, okay? All right, so what other connections do you have with the Bartram Trail Conference and the Bartram Trail in general? Uh, we've just, uh, released uh, Cultivating the Wild. It's being, uh, pub it's being shown on PBS now uh, for the next three years. It'll be on, and I can't tell you when it'll be on there or whatever, but um, and because the Bartram uh, Garden Club is a, um, an affiliate, you'll get, uh, you'll get access to it here so you can show it as a program, which would really be cool. It's a really wonderful film. It's a one-hour documentary that focuses on six Southerners committed to reclaiming nature of the South, similar to what William Bartram was all about. So it's really, really fun. And it, and it includes the natural history of Amelia Island in there. So you will want to see this. There's a, a, a birder by the name of Drew Lyman. He's a naturalist and professor of wildlife ecology at Clemson University. And he filmed his segment of the film at St. Simon's Island. So it's very appropriate on the beach side and so forth. It really is cool. Philip Juris, I don't know if you've ever seen any of his artwork, but it's absolutely remarkable. The first time that I got a copy of Philip Juris's book, I, I was looking at it and, and up he walks to, uh, to talk to me and I, I was telling him what wonderful photographs they were and he says they're not photographs, <laughs> they're actually paintings and, and it's really amazing. But, his subjects included the southeastern barrier island, so you'll, you'll recognize some of his artwork in, in, the, in the film. And uh, Janice Ray has uh, published five books uh, featuring the ecology of a uh, cracker childhood, and she's filmed on the Altamaha River, and so you'll recognize the neighborhood that she's in. So, so, you're, so you, you own part of this film. It's really amazing. So, the legacy of the Bartram Garden Club? Well, the name of your garden club certainly is part of that legacy. Uh, your American Lotus logo is part of your legacy. Your historic marker is part of, of your legacy. And your natural history represented by cultivating the wilds, all part of your Bartram legacy. So, hey, you're one of us. <laughs> you're a part of us. You're a major part of us. So let's think about some of the things that Bartram said about you guys. Your culture, he said, Mr. Egan received us very politely and hospitably. The gentleman was very intelligent and an able planter. What do gardeners do? So he was talking about you guys back then in 1774, isn't that amazing? And um, uh, also, he says, these islands also lay open to the invasion and ravages of pirates. Y'all ought to have a pirate festival. <laughs> Oh, you do? Okay. Well, that's good. So, but Bartram was the first one to actually document those, those issues for the, for the British. Isn't that interesting? And your natural resources, the coast and sounds, and talking about your fish and oysters and the shellfish, you all ought to have a shrimp festival. <laughs> you really ought to. But who said it first? Mr. Bartram introduced Amelia Island to the world. He did. When he published his book in 1791, the British couldn't get enough of it, and um, and all, and, and so uh, authors like Kublai Khan, uh, Kublai Khan and uh, Wadsworth and these guys actually used Bartram's words in some of their poems and so forth. So his flowery words and everything were Bartram's travels is a unique book. It's hard to read because it has it's it's spiritual in nature. It's not only that, it's, uh, it's something that uh, is scientific from the standpoint of he wanted to identify these plants 
and, and, and all and use the correct nomenclature and the Latin der derivations of them and all of that kind of good stuff. And, um, and, and so that was really important to him. But his passion and, and his heart are on those pages too. And the flowery words he, does, he uses, there are parts of the book that just draw you in. You know you're there when you're reading those books. Just like when you read about these pages, 67, 68, and travels, and you know you've been to Amelia Island when you read his work. It's really that cool. And so that is certainly part of your literary, and this is all right out of travels, and it's part of your heritage as well. It's your Bartram heritage. So we were here shortly after the storm that wasn't here, and so I, I brought with me uh, 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 the uh, uh, a director of the Marching Trail Conference, his name is Brad Sanders, who wrote a, an incredible book about the entire Marching Trail. I've got a copy out over here. And so uh, we, Beverly was here and she, we really appreciated that. And so she said, well, uh, and so we said, well, we want to go searching for Billy Bartram on Amelia Island. Where's Billy? That was the game we were playing. Where's Billy? So we got out here and we found it real quickly at your site. Not only that, the Egmont Plantation. We found that it, you know you had noticed that, and so Bartram mentions that specifically. So we're finding Billy. So we we went to the museum, and uh, what a wonderful museum! And guess what? The Egmont Plantation was there in the museum, but there's Billy in your museum. After walking through a spacious forest of live oaks and palms, crossing a creek that ran through the narrow marsh, and so he's everywhere. So we, we drove over Egan's Creek today. So Billy Marsham's buddy, e Egan, got named all over the place. There's even an Egan's Creek Greenway here. So we have these connections. So we're finding Billy everywhere. So we even said, well, OK, let's go to the beach. So that's what you do when you're on at, at Fernandina Beach. You go to the beach. So we went looking for Billy at the beach. And we stood there on the north end of uh, Amelia Island. And we were looking over at Cumberland Island. And we were trying to figure out, OK, well, he would have paddled around this corner here. And figuring that the, the tide was right, he would have gotten swept down. He probably would have landed somewhere near here. And so as we're having this discussion with the guy who wrote the book on Where's Billy, um, you know, we, we looked in the other direction. And way off in the distance, we could, we could see these guys coming. And as they got closer, Mr. Egan followed by Billy Bartram showed up. It was absolutely a Bartram moment for us. It was really, really cool. And so, you know, in our imagination, this is how Billy saw Amelia Island was on horseback. And uh, that's what he would have done as getting around. So uh, that's how the Bartram Trail Conference, Amelia Island Bartram moment occurred, was watching Billy and Mr. Egan wide the, the beaches here. Isn't it cool? So that's, that's, that's what we enjoy. Do we really enjoy that? So what can the Bartram Club do? Become an affiliate. Well, you've already done that. And uh, you can help us build the Bartram Trail in Nassau County because St. John's County uh, uh, this past Monday passed a resolution to do the same thing. Duval County has already started work on their Bartram Trail. Nassau, or uh, Volusia County has already built theirs. And obviously Putnam County has already built theirs. So if we get all those counties done, we'll have the whole St. John's River, the whole eastern seaboard done with Bartram Trail. Isn't that neat? And that's what we need to do. So we're, we're working on that. Uh, you can also join the Bartram Trail Society of Florida. We've got the forms over here. And as individuals, and as individuals join us, we appreciate that. And we would like to invite you to come and visit us April the 17th and 18th for the St. John's River Bartram Frolic and Bartram Symposium. The Bartram Symposium will be a viewing of Cultivating the Wild, and we'll have the stars of the movie there as well doing their interpretation of it. So that's, that's what we'll want to do. So that's what we'd want to do. So do y'all have any questions at all for Billy or myself or, or whatever? But we, we're excited to be here. We're excited of what uh, um, the Bartram legacy that's up here. Um, we really appreciate um, Beverly and her, uh, her persistence in, in getting us up here and everything. We appreciate the, the folks from the county and, uh, and the Bullington uh, paddling outfit and, um, and all of that. Um, it's been fun to be up here. 
and um, we hope to hope to continue to come on. All right. So, go ahead. I noticed that the uh, home is in Pennsylvania, but yet the trail starts in Charleston. Is that yes? So nothing, nothing from Pennsylvania down is covered. Well, you you could, except that what the trail is established is what what is in travels. Okay, so that's how you got to think about it. So uh, John Bartram, yes. If you go to John Bartram's uh, uh, house up in uh, up in Philadelphia, it's still there. It's a national uh, heritage monument up there, and uh, and all. And so the John Bartram Society is in charge of that place. And if you mention William, they said, "Oh yes, he was his seventh son." So John Bartram is a superstar in Philadelphia, and rightfully so. John Bartram was very much ensconced with uh, the uh, with everybody. William Penn was. He was a Quaker, so William Penn was an associate of his. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was an associate of his and shopped at Bartram Gardens. Um, the founding fathers actually during the 17, during the, uh, during 1790s, when they were writing the Constitution, the Constitutional, uh, what do they call that, the Constitutional Congress, they would take breaks, go across the river, and visit John Bartram's gardens uh, for a, a, a part of repose. So, um, See, see, I've got documents that show that six of the seven founding fathers were, uh, were, were friends of John Bartram. So, so he was very famous and all, but he didn't write the book. And so the book Travels is what the Bartram Trail is, uh, is done. And he started with Travels at Charleston. So that's why. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. It's a bit hard to see from back here. So is it possible to walk the or hike, or canoe, or whatever, along a, a series of Bartram trails that interconnect? Well, you know, there's things called interstates. And, and a lot of the trails that were back then, it's just like, it's just like we were talking about, the old King's Highway is US-1. And so, uh, yes, there are a multitude of Bartram trails or trails that represent Bartram's travels. And so forth. That's really the purpose of the Bartram Trail Conference is to try to link all those together. But you just, it's, for example, if you wanted to hike North Carolina, you know, I mean that's a that's a big state. So you know, if you want to hike the 200 miles of, of the Bartram Trail in North Carolina, you can do that. If you want to come to Palatka, we've got seven hiking trails, we've got eight paddling trails, and 80 miles of waterways. And so you can go to those areas. Here, you've got you know, rep very much representative of, of, of Bartram's travels here, you know, with the Intercoastal and the uh, Egan's uh, Creek Greenway is a representative of all that stuff. And that's what we're trying to do, is to gather all of those pearls, if you will, and put them under one banner. And so you'd go into uh, Florida, and first place you would start traveling, either paddling or hiking or biking, would be Amelia Island. Then you would move down to Jacksonville, and Jacksonville is, 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 is doing exactly that. <clears throat> Their trails would primarily be water trails because he did that. He did do uh, travel on land over uh, in, uh, in Duval County, but in travels, he left here, went there, got in a boat, and he took off up the St. John's River. So, so primarily uh, it's, it's waterways in Florida. But, then you get over to Alachua County and Gainesville and all that, all of that is land trails. And so they already have trails that you can, can walk and so forth. But it's not a continuous thing like Lewis and Clark. And that was why, that's why we didn't get established uh, as the Bartram Trail uh, originally, because the National Park Service actually had, that's what they wanted. They wanted a continuous trail. You, you can't do that in modern day with Bartram because it's so extensive. It's 2,500 miles that he traveled, but it's, it's broken up by cities and, and so forth. Where are the trails in Gainesville? Uh, the, Alach the, uh, the Payne's Prairie. Oh, okay. Payne's Prairie is the primary one. Okay. And Micanopy and uh, out to, uh, out to uh, Alachua, uh, or, yeah, Alachua, um, and um, that's... What about Palatka? Palatka? There's a whole brochure here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
that's what that brochure is, is, is that. So. Yeah, Put Putnam County is actually like the epicenter of a lot of sites in Florida. What is it, 34, Sam? Yeah. 34 sites are documented in Putnam County, and they're all on this map. So, right. ma'am, in answer to your question, this would be a good place to start yeah. is down around Putnam County and see what appeals to you, whether it's boating or hiking or riding a bicycle or whatever. And it's outlined in this map, and we have these available up here. These are free. Yeah, so this is, this is what the Bartram Trail in Putnam County looks like. Um, it, you see the blue line is where he traveled by waterways. And so there's 80 miles of this waterways that he traveled. I mean, he went into Crescent Lake and all the way down to Lake George and paddled, paddled all the way down to um, Blue Springs where the manatees are hanging out now. So we saw 400 of them last, last week. It was amazing. The red trail here is where he traveled by horseback, and this goes all the way up past Interlochen, all the way to Gainesville. Highway 20 is the Bartram Trail. So there again, you can't, you know, that, that's, that's what it is. And so what we want to do is highlight areas where you can, can recreate doing that. But, uh, but a lot of the original trails and so forth, he didn't blaze any trails at all. He followed the Indian trails or the Spanish trails. Remember, the Spanish had been here for 200 years before he got here. So he didn't have to blaze any trails or anything. Plus, the Indians, the Native Americans, had been here for centuries before that, right? And so, um, and that was, that, was, um, that was how he traveled. He traveled under the, under the um, safety of, the, uh, of the, the lower store, Spalding's lower store, which was... Um, up in, in the Desire, St. Thomas Island, Island was where he lived and all, but Spalding had, had these stores up and down and the primary trade was with the Indians. And so that was, uh, Palaka was the, the hub of European trade with the Indians, believe it or not, <laughs> at that time. Yeah, um, in here, it looked like the southernmost terminus in Florida is Lake George, which is kind of a pellet. But on one of the maps you showed, there was a marker down there in Orlando. Yes. So there's more. Okay, let me go back and get to, to that map. Let's see. See that little red thing yeah. in Orlando? Yeah, yeah, okay. So here you are. And so here is the... There are two garden clubs in Orlando that are so much in love with Billy, they put up signs. Yeah, they put up signs, even though as far down as he got was to Blue Springs. Okay, so, so the, 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 the land garden club, very proud of their sign because, sure enough, Billy was there and, uh, and all, and so that's what that denotes. These are commemorative signs and so forth, but that red line is actually the route that, he, that Billy took during 1774. In 1766, when he was working out of St. Augustine, he also traveled down to New Smyrna and all, and was actually shipwrecked here at New Smyrna Beach in 1766. So it's pretty cool. The story is really fascinating. It really is. Once you get into it, it's kind of like you know, it's hard to you can't get can't get loose of it. It's really funny and, and, and all, but it's, it's really funny. And uh, everybody has their way of coming to Bartram. You know, whether it's through gardens. Uh, whether it's through plants, whether it's through his relationship with the Indians. He's, he and, jo and um, uh, um, Thomas Jefferson, when they were forming the, the United States, they came to Bartram to get his advice on what should the United States attitude toward Native Americans be. Because who knew about Native Americans? Nobody in Philadelphia did, but Billy did. And so they used him, and he actually wrote a, a, a quite a treatise on, you know, the way that uh, Native Americans ought to be treated. He said that the white, they don't need white man's laws, taxes, or anything else, or religion. And so that was his, his point of view. Because they, they were already cultured. That was, that was Barton's point of view. Then when it came to slavery, he could not believe that they, were, they, they weren't included slavery in the original um, United States. Because he was a Quaker, they were vehemently against it. And so he's got, you know, you can read these papers and everything. Really interesting how, and so he did have a lasting effect after travels from the standpoint of being a botanist. You know, he was an associate with uh, Audubon. He was an associate with uh, Elliot, the other, the other botanist that uh, famous and so forth. 
and the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Philadelphia Philosophical Society. You have heard of that? Well, that was formed by John Marshall and Benjamin Franklin. And so John, or William Marshall became a major part of that and was part of all of the, the science that was studied by the United States originally. So he's a pretty famous guy in the science. Yes, so, can you tell us a little bit more about the Bartram Trail Nassau County signs mm -hmm. that your society hopes to erect around our area and how that process works and how the city and the county and our club can work together to make that happen. Sure. Um, so the way this thing happened in Putnam County was that we, um, you know, we were in a county committee meeting, and somebody comes up and says, "Is there anything famous happened in Palatka?" Well, you know, yeah, we had marched some paddle past here, and he had some called us, uh, they were civil and appeared happy in their situation. That's a legacy, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty cool, you know, because that's pretty complimentary. And that was in 1774. So I said, that's pretty historic. So we ought to probably look at what Bartram did while he was here, and that would be historic. And so we had a county commissioner that said, okay, you're chairman of the committee, Sam, <laughs> go forth. And so with that, we went and got scholars, and they came in and, and told us that that was indeed what we possessed was that legacy and that, uh, that history of Bartram here in the town. And so what we decided to do was to make that the theme of ecotourism in Palatka and by creating the Bartram Trail in Putnam County. Well, lo and behold, the Florida Park Service picks up on it and they said, well, you know, you have done a really good job of documenting and making the trails and all that kind of good stuff. So we want to make it a national recreation trail. So that's how that happened. So the, to answer your question, all the signage and all that kind of stuff, we just kind of made it up as we went along, but it just kind of makes sense. And so what we would do here in, 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 uh, on Amelia Island would be to actually go out, Fort Clinch is obviously a Bartram site, Egan's Creek is obviously a Bartram site, you know, uh, the, the beach he talks about, so we would, you've already got a marker there, so we don't need to worry about that. We need to find those Indian mounds wherever the plantation was. We know that he talks about that in his book, so we need to find that. And then we would need to include the trails that you already have and just provide interpretation on that. And so this, the, the, the last slide that I showed you there, this is how we, this is part of the, or is one of our kiosks that we have in Putnam County. And it doesn't have to be this extensive because this, this kiosk was, um, sorry, this kiosk is the Palatka kiosk. There's also a Wallachia kiosk, and there's a Spalding's Lower Store kiosk. And so what we did was create this so that people could come and see and learn about William Bartram uh, at those sites. And so what we want to do is to find a spot for, uh, at Fort Clinch to, to have an interpretation. And then we would want to create a map that would have all of these sites and so forth. And we'd also want to detail the trails that people might want to travel while they're here. So that's, that's the idea behind it. Wouldn't be a very expensive venture at all, um, but we, we got a Humanities Council grant that paid for, um, for all that good stuff. We, we spent, you know, not a lot of money. And then our trail markers that, that, that we have um, are large, but they're large because the majority of our sites are on waterways, and so we need to be able to see a mile down the river and see the next trail sign, and so that's, that's how we do that. But that's really up to you guys as to how you want your Bartram Trail to look, okay, because you've already got a lot of stuff here. So, so really, you don't have to do much other than well, let's document it, let's interpret it, we'll, the Bartram Trail Conference will be happy to share with you all of our graphics, all of our uh, illustrations, all of that good stuff to, uh, to develop your, your Bartram Trail here. That's what St. Augustine's doing, and that's what Duval County's doing, and Volusia County has already done it, so it only makes sense that Nassau County would be, would be part of that. So it really, really is, it's, it's really up to you guys, um, you know, as to what your Bartram Trail looks like. We'll give you the content and, and verify it for you. So, yes, so as, as we walk down Egan Creek, mm -hmm. 
500,000 feet, just there. That's where he walked, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that needs a sign. Yeah, or exactly. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. And you know, that, that park is perfect to have a, a kiosk celebrating that because, I mean, it, the, the words of Egan's Creek are right there, in, you know, out of, out of the book. It really is. And so it's, knows who Egan is, but now I know. Yeah. Yeah, he's Billy Bartram's buddy. He was, he was his riding mate and on the horses. They went, I saw a picture of him riding the horses on the beach. You know, it was really cool. Yeah, exactly. That's the fun part of this, honestly. It really is. It's, it's, uh, it's fun of that stuff. Now, you know, as gardeners, y'all need to go out and start identifying some of these Bartram plants here and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yes, sir. I was just saying, Sam, that the most intriguing part to us is crossing of the sound mm -hmm. because we, we make that trip almost on a daily basis yeah. from Amelia to Cumberland and back and right. from the St. Mary's River to Cumberland right. and then cutting across the Fort Clinch. Uh, talking about a plaque there, that, that's an amazing part of the history right there. Absolutely. So we see on a daily basis. Absolutely. And it was funny, uh, we were talking about it while you were uh, showing the slides. I think uh, I think we were crossing the channel uh, the day that you guys had the horses on the beach. There. Could, remember seeing the horses? <laughs> very, very good. I, I, you know, again, uh, you know, Marshall Mowen, you're sitting there, and we were discussing this, right? We were just trying to figure out, okay, well, how did he travel when he got here and all that stuff? Yeah, well, he came over by boat and all that, and then along come the horses. There they are. They were dressed in old timey gear and everything. Really cool. Really cool. Yes, ma'am. Will you please tell the group? that our marker is no longer blue as you projected on okay. the screen. Okay. We've got that coming up this afternoon. Well, you like, you'll get a surprise this afternoon. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the historical markers are strange. They, they have, they've they gone through an evolution and, and all. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, um, it moves around depending upon, you know, who's in Tallahassee these days and so forth. So, um, yeah. So most of the most of the marsh markers are, are nice army green, and I would imagine. I don't know what color you're getting. Black. The original markers were brown. Right. And ours, somewhere along the line, was painted blue. Right. And it is no longer has been completely restored okay. to its original 1981 Excellent. color and condition. And we're going to unveil that today at 1:30. How exciting! It's really cool. Uh, we we've we've done. We've done several of these refurbishments and so forth, and it really is really is neat. We've also lost quite a few of the signs, and that's Five. one of the, that's one of the things that we've got to figure out is how do we get those back? Because um, as you'll see on your sign, that garden club doesn't exist anymore. It's been enveloped by the Bartram Garden Club. Same thing in Palatka. Palatka's, you know, I'm sitting there looking at, you know, this was this was uh, provided by. You know, the Talanzia Garden Club. Well, who, who is that? Mm -hmm. Well, the Palatka Garden Club now is the Talanzia Garden Club. And so it's the same way all, all across. Uh, from 1975 um, through 85, basically, is when the, the uh, Deep South group was, was really promoting these things and, uh, and, and did such a wonderful job. And so it's really up to us now to help the garden clubs find them refurbishing and, and so forth and all of that's all of that's in the works so it's really cool and you guys are right on the front line so it's good it's really good any other questions well thank you so much for having us we've been this has been a long anticipated Fine. <laughs> attendance here and everything but you guys have been instrumental in um in the uh uh, in the development of this, and this same presentation will now be able to be made by all of, to all of the garden clubs that have markers and so forth, and, and become affiliates of the of the Virgin Trail Conference. And and uh, I just want to mention one other thing. I did mention about cultivating the wild. That'll be done. These prints, um, there, these prints are actual scans from Bartram's original. A life-size scans of Bartram's original artwork from the Natural History Museum in London, and somehow we got them uh, at the Bartram Trail Society of Florida, and so it's uh, it's some of the highest resolution of his original artwork that exists in the United States. So that's where those came from. Okay, all right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.
Golf Club would like to uh, present you with a donation. Ooh, and this you. is for the Bartram Trail Society of Florida because obviously you do so much work. And I know it takes money to fund that. So um, Thank you. this is um, our gift to the society. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, that was an amazing.